Welcome to The Note, I'm Ashley. The Xbox One could use a couple more exclusives these days, but there are two games Microsoft apparently is not interested in making sequels for, Quantum Break and Alan Wake. In an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, the head of developer Remedy said the studio planned on making long-term franchises with both games and worked hard to flesh out the characters and the game worlds, but CEO Tara Virtala said that Microsoft wasn't interested. He said, considering our history, Alan Wake was really interesting, but it was a collaboration with Microsoft. Due to certain reasons, it never got a sequel. Quantum Break also, we put a lot of effort into creating the world, the characters, the stories, but still it was Microsoft IP. They decided not to take it further. He did leave the door open to possibly doing something with the games in the future, but for now they've got a new game out, an action adventure third person game called Control. Well, not, it's not out out. It's gonna be out next year for PC, PlayStation 4, and of course, Xbox One. The developer behind The Culling 2 says it's removing the game from sale. It's going back to the original. You might remember The Culling 2 went on sale earlier this month, was not really well received with its player count dropping to just two people on Steam in less than 24 hours. Lots of people were upset with the developer Xavian, which pulled support from the original Culling game, which had a decent sized audience, to focus on the sequel. Well, in a new YouTube video, Xavian Director of Operations Josh Van Veld said they've heard fan concerns and that prompted a little bit of soul searching. He said, The Culling 2 is not the game that you asked for and it's not the game you expect as a worthy successor to The Culling. It's been difficult to deal with the launch of The Culling 2, but it's been valuable to us in terms of looking inwards, backwards, and to see how we got here as a studio. Anyone who bought The Culling 2 is going to be able to get a refund and moving forward the studio is going to go back to the day one build of the original game and start from there. It looks like the developer behind Horizon Zero Dawn is growing up. The Sony first party developer Guerrilla Games is moving into a bigger office space and significantly raising its staff. CEO Herman Holst told a Dutch publication he's been wanting to expand for the last three to four years and they are now moving into a space in Amsterdam that's the site of an old newspaper printing press. The new offices will give them lots of room to grow. The developers currently have about 250 employees but want to grow to about 400. Holst said they've already hired nine new employees and the developer wants to work on both new titles and games based on existing titles. I wonder what that could be. I don't know, Horizon maybe? Guerrilla Games definitely riding high these days. Horizon Zero Dawn was one of the breakout games of last year. Very excited to see what they come up with next, both uh, if they explore that world further, which we're expecting, and what else new they might do. If you missed the original Goku and Vegeta characters in the popular new fighting game Dragon Ball Fighters, don't worry, they are on the way. Bandai Namco says the next set of DLC characters will include base Goku and base Vegeta and they'll arrive sometime early August. Base Vegeta will have the Gallic Gun Super Special where he launches energy towards the ground along with a Galaxy Breaker move that emits energy from his entire body. You know. Dragon Ball stuff. Meanwhile, base Goku will have access to Kaioken that will let him perform consecutive attacks as well as the super spirit bomb that is ultra powerful but also really slow. The game is out now for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One and a Switch version is due out in September. The director of District 9 and Elysium apparently wants to get in the video game business. Neil Blomkamp tweeted recently, I have a game I want to direct with mechs. How would one go about such an endeavor? And he tagged developers Machine Games, Arcane Studios, id Software, Respawn Entertainment, IO Interactive. The conversation didn't stop there though. Someone tagged developer Cliff Blazinski and asked if he had any advice, and he did. In a tongue-in-cheek response, Blazinski wrote, one, seek funding with a fancy PowerPoint and charisma. Two, have publishers arbitrarily approve or disapprove for weird reasons. Three, if approved, enjoy the stress. Yeah, he'd, he'd know. Despite all the joking around, Blomkamp did seem to get some serious interest. A game designer at DICE invited him to come pitch the concept to them, to which Blomkamp said, okay, so we'll see what comes of that. New jobs via Twitter? Movie directors becoming game directors via Twitter? I like it. We've got some more details about The Division 2, including how factions will interact and what its world is gonna look like 
As we've seen in the trailer, the game is set in Washington, D.C. after most of the country has been wiped out by a pandemic, and Shadi El Zabawi, the associate creative director of the game, told the site Gaming Bolt that there will be a focus on the survivors of the pandemic in The Division 2. He said there will be different factions of survivors who will dynamically interact with each other, which will give players different gameplay opportunities. He said, this is what we call a living world. In this context, the factions, civilians, they all need resources. After seven months, everyone wants food and water, medicine, so there will be resource control points spread within the city, and the factions will fight for it dynamically. Looks like gamers are liking what they're seeing so far. The game has already been the most number of beta signups for any Ubisoft game, breaking the record held by the first Division game. So, pretty cool. We'll see what happens. Two upcoming Capcom games for PC are going to include some notorious DRM software. Monster Hunter World and Resident Evil 2 will both be loaded with de novo anti-tampered DRM on PC, and that's according to the Steam pages for both games. De novo pretty widely baited by gamers, with some claiming that the software affects games' performance, and it's also been legendary for being cracked within days of a game's release. Although, remember, this was the one that when it came out was like, this is gonna be impossible to overcome, and it did work for a while, but then people figured out how it all worked, and now, not much of a barrier. But some developers like Capcom still use it to try and protect a game during the launch period, which is when games do the majority of their sales, just trying to whittle down any piracy numbers they can. We'll see how fast these two games get cracked. Monster Hunter World is hitting PC on August 9th and Resident Evil 2 on January 25th. So a bit of a longer wait on that one. A big sale on Xbox games is going on. Right now, it's the ultimate game sale, and it's got some pretty decent deals on newer games like Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2, Far Cry 5, knocking 20% off the price for those games. But for some older games like Ark Survival Evolved, Assassin's Creed Origins, Dark Souls 3, Dragon Age Inquisition, the deals are getting pretty significant, sometimes as much as 60 to 70% off. They've also got a deal where you can get three months of Xbox Game Pass for 10 bucks, and worth looking at if you're a gamer on a budget. I mean, 10 bucks for three months access to a huge library of games is not too shabby. The sale is ending the morning of July 31st, so if you wanna get your shopping done, well, you still have some time to do it, but that's the deadline. New details on the Joaquin Phoenix Joker origin movie have been announced. First up, the official title is just Joker. Yep, that's it, Joker. Second, we have a release date and it's way sooner than you expect. Warner Brothers has set an October 4th, 2019 release date. Now considering we didn't even know for sure if this movie was going to happen at all a month ago, that's a pretty tight schedule. Joker will be the first film in DC's darker universe spin-offs that won't really have any relation to what they're doing with the DCEU. They're gonna be shot down and dirty and on a budget. The Hollywood Reporter says the film's budget will be $55 million, which pretty minuscule for a comic book movie. Those a lot of times are running you $250 million in production. Warner Brothers press release says they describe the film as a character study and a cautionary tale and that it will be much more grounded, more of a gritty crime movie than your typical super powered entertainment. So we'll see how that goes. Killer dolls have been a staple of James Wan's career, going back to the original Saw. He started with the creepy tricycle riding puppet named Billy, went on to a movie all about killer dolls called Dead Silence before creating one of the most famous evil dolls in movie history when Annabelle popped up in The Conjuring and became so popular she got her own spin-off series. He's keeping the streak alive with another movie at his horror home Blumhouse called Megan. That's Megan with a three instead of an E, so it's down with the kids. Juan will produce through his Atomic Monster banner and his hired director Gerard Johnstone for the job. Johnstone made a great little New Zealand horror film called Housebound a few years ago. Looks to be his big break here. Megan is about a toy maker who creates a lifelike doll with empathetic AI to look after his recently orphaned young niece. And apparently the super smart doll becomes overly protective of the girl. And you know, I'm sure they end up having like a really nice talk and they become friends and live happily ever after. Certainly nothing bad can happen with that setup. The film is gonna begin shooting this fall while Juan is putting the finishing touches on Aquaman. The EU just hit Google with a massive fine. I mean like, massive, saying the tech giant unfairly used its Android operating system to promote its own products. Authorities fined Google $5.1 billion, which needless to say, gonna get even Google's attention when you put a B 
up there. The issue is Google's business model, where it gives phone makers like Samsung, for example, its Android operating system if they prioritize its search bar, Chrome browser, and other apps over those of rival companies. Margareta Vestager, Europe's antitrust chief, said Google has used Android as a vehicle to cement the dominance of its search engine. These practices have denied rivals the chance to innovate and compete on the merits. They have denied European consumers the benefits of effective competition in the important mobile sphere. And this isn't the first time that the EU has hit Google with a multi-billion dollar fine. Last year, they fined them $2.8 billion over the company's practice of favoring its own services in internet search results. The EU said after its recent fine, Google has 90 days to end its practices or it can face penalties of up to 5% of the worldwide average daily revenue of its parent company, Alphabet. Not surprisingly, Google says it's going to appeal the decision, but regardless, that's a lot of money. Okay, that's all the news for this roundup. Let us know what you think of the updates in the comments down below to make sure you get news from every corner of the internet every weekday like this video. And if you're new here, subscribe to the know. The head of developer Remedy said this studio planned on game worlds, but CEO Taro Vertala, Vertala, Taro Vertala, a big sale on Xbox games going on right now. It's the ultimate game sale and it's come 